couple more questions for you before we turn to the to the audience questions that we have. But you know, one of the things that you know you also are working on with me is this criminal justice piece. You know, I, I went to Yale for law school. Uh, I saw more kids doing drugs and and engaging in just crazy activity, uh, rule breaking, law breaking activity at Yale than I ever saw in a housing project. I saw way crazier stuff, but for some reason, those Yale kids, when they got in trouble, they went to rehab. Nobody looked at a Yale kid in trouble and said, what you need is 17 years in prison. That'll make your life a lot better. You'll be a much better person after that. And yet almost every kid I work with as a volunteer in those housing projects in New Haven, they all went to prison for some period of time for engaging literally in the same behavior. Mm -hmm. I don't know that our community is going to be able to flourish if we don't do something about this criminal justice system. Uh, we know what to do with poor kids when they get in trouble with drugs, but we do it with rich folks' kids. Um, right. So, so it's, a lot of stuff is not a mystery, uh, but it seems to be a real barrier, an, an extra barrier to success. Uh, why are you so passionate about criminal justice? What, what is your hope that we will, will come away from 2020 with in the area of criminal justice reform? It gets back, you know, Van, you and I talk about this whole idea of equitable justice, and you can start to parse that however you want. But, you know, I'm tired of seeing, you know, a brown kid treated one way and a white kid treated a, a different way with the exact same issue. And that is just the blatant racism that has now infiltrated our justice system that has to be changed. And so when you all came up with this initiative and asked me to be one of the founding partners, I was all in. I said, because it's not right. Because what we really need to do is liberate opportunities, uh, liberate spirits, as opposed to dampening spirits. Look, a large part of, you know, when you see some of the activities is because these kids don't have access to capital opportunity and reach. You now we did a project in Baltimore. We've done one in Detroit and a couple other places in building these, these systems, we partnered with groups like Empower, et cetera, to take high school graduates and teach them to be technically trained um, uh, tech, you know, uh, uh, technologists that can now serve the IT community. And you know, you're taking kids who are out of work, no work, part-time jobs, now making 30, 40, 50, $60,000 a year after this training. Well, as more kids see that I have a way out of this environment is community. And what was stark to me was, you know, we opened one of our first ones, actually a block away from where Freddie Gray was killed um, in, uh, in Baltimore, and literally a block away. And you see all this economic activity happening around that community, but none in the community. And now we're graduating 40 to 60 kids every nine months out of this program. You know, we've got, I think it's a 100% job placement rate, 98% graduation rate, uh, of these kids and training them. And then they can now go and change the whole dynamic of their family by now coming from a, no access to those big buildings over there. It seems like great opportunity happening in, in Baltimore to now I'm an IT service rep for that group there. I make $48,000 a year. I can now go buy a house in that same community for $20,000. Mm -hmm. Okay and now refurbish it and do my work and build it up and actually build some equity. And th that's, again, creating these ecosystems is critical. And part of that ecosystem is ensuring that the criminal justice system right. isn't the only place that our young people go. 